Hi, I'm Kevin Borland. I'm a music producer, a guitarist, and a lawyer. I'm going to tell you about an ongoing culinary adventure I embarked on this summer, and I encourage you to join me. Not just by watching my videos, but try it in your city. My quest began Monday, July 25, 2016, when I set out to cycle through the world's 206 ethnic cuisines on my lunch breaks. I call it the No Repeat Nationality Workday Lunch Challenge. In the previous episodes, I sampled 67 ethnic cuisines, mostly in and around the Washington, D.C. metro area. In this ninth episode, I'm going to sample the cuisines of the Solomon Islands, Belarus, and Andorra. Today we're making kara from the Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islands is a country consisting of nearly a thousand islands in the Melanesian region of the Pacific. Tito Wan's grating the yuca, and I am stirring the coconut cream. In the Solomon Islands, kara is eaten as a snack. Next step is to squeeze all the liquid out of the yuca. This technique of extracting starch from roots for use as a staple is common throughout the Pacific. At the heart of this dish is canned corned beef. I've never had canned corned beef before and usually I like to eat fresh stuff, but we'll see. I assume that the prevalence of canned meat products in the Pacific Islands is simply because the meat from land animals has to be imported. So this dish combines traditional island cooking with modern influences from later European visitors. The Solomon Islands in particular was an English protectorate until 1978. We cut the banana leaves into manageable portions and we're going to use those to wrap up uh, uh, the other ingredients. While you may not have heard of the Solomon Islands before, you may have heard of the island of Guadalcanal the island that is home to the country's capital, Honiara. Guadalcanal was the location of a major battle in World War II between American and Japanese troops. The battle was among others that occurred on Midway Island and Iwo Jima. The final step would be to wrap them and bake them. Now we don't have a Lovo oven, which is like an earth oven like they would use on Solomon Islands, uh, so we're going to protect the bananas uh, when we put them in the regular oven by uh, wrapping them in some foil also. So about now, you may be thinking that you've seen food like this before. The cooking method is strikingly similar to that of making a tamale, although tamales are made from cornmeal rather than yuca, and I need not say that canned corned beef would not be a typical tamale filling. Tamales are known to date back at least 5,000 years in the Americas. So did the Spanish bring this technique to the Pacific in the post-Columbian era? Maybe in Guam and the Philippines, but here I suspect not. I think this cooking style has been present in the Pacific since ancient times and was developed by seafaring people as a way of adapting to the resources available on different islands they encountered. Was this technology independently developed in the Americas? Probably. But remember, Native Americans originated in the Asian side of the Pacific before a series of migrations. So we set the oven to 400 degrees because we did a little research and it looks like an earth oven uh, usually cooks at about a maximum of 400 degrees. I'm a little afraid of the canned corned beef still, uh, but here we go. Well, the flavors from the coconut milk and the yuca take away some of the saltiness uh, or mask some of the saltiness of the, uh, the canned meat. It's interesting. I don't think I'd go out of my way to eat this, but I wouldn't go hungry either if I lived on the uh, Solomon Islands. For my 69th cuisine, I'm trying Draniki. That's the national dish of Belarus. Uh, Belarus is a country located uh, between Poland and Russia. Stroniki are potato pancakes, and my family would have called them plaki. That's the Polish name for the identical dish. Uh, so this, uh, this rounds out the first third of my quest. I have now eaten one third of the world's cuisines. I'm really excited about today's lunch. I'm going to one of Jose Andreas' restaurants called Haleo. Jose Andreas is one of the most influential chefs in the United States in recent times. Born in Spain, he is credited with bringing the concept of small plates called tapas or meze to America. We're fortunate to have about 10 of his restaurants in DC metro area. Here at uh, Haleo, they serve uh, several dishes that are representative of the cuisine of Andorra. 
Andorra shares much of its cuisine with neighboring Catalonia, Spain. Bread that's garlic, rosemary, and olive oil. The dipping of bread and olive oil is common throughout Andorra, Spain, and much of the northern Mediterranean region. The first dish I ordered is called escalibata. Escalivada consists primarily of roasted red peppers and eggplant. Escalivada is generally served cold. The grilled vegetables soaked in olive oil have a smoky flavor, and in this rendition, the dominant flavors are that of the eggplant and onion. There's a lot of onion adding a sweetness to the dish, but it's also a bit pungent. And the main course is bacalao con sanfaina, and uh, bacalao is just uh, it's codfish, and uh, sanfaina is a uh, vegetable stew. Looks and smells really good. The cod is cooked just right, and the uh, sampaina is really, really flavorful. It's, um, it is more of a stew. It's not a salsa. It's a, it's, it's hot. Hot temperature, not hot spicy. I'm really glad I came here today. I've been meaning to check out this place for a while. Um, this is the same uh, chef that uh, also does Zaytania, which I've been to on several occasions. Thank you. I'm going to post new episodes every Thursday night on YouTube and on my Facebook fan page until I complete my journey. Be sure to tune in next Thursday when I sample more food from Eastern Europe and from Polynesia. I also encourage you to either subscribe to my YouTube channel or like my Facebook page or both. If you do, you'll get to hear a lot of my music and keep tabs on some of the other interesting projects I'm working on. And also, sharing is caring.